Security call free, security call free. Call me, come on. Yeah, I'm Corey, Carrier Special, low confidential bases on road, so I'll see you in a minute. All right, it's been quite a pleasant journey, we have no troubles at all. Another batch of secrets on the open road to permanent oblivion. Offloaded in bulk by business, councils and government. For the less the public have the right of access to information, so the more sacks of secrets there will always be to dispose of. No one will ever know how important the contents were. Secrets bagged up and secure from prying eyes, even on their final journey, where the confidential label could almost be an epitaph to unnecessary intrigue. But access to much simple information is still the exception and not the rule. Not available. I can't tell you that. I'm not allowed to disclose that. We don't deal with that sort of thing. Sorry. I'm sorry, we don't deal with that information over the phone. Not available. We don't deal with that. I'm afraid that's confidential. Not available. Confidential. No. We haven't got that sort of information. All too often, the public draws a blank. And at every level, the language of secrecy is much the same. We do not have figures because this information is not collected. Mr Speaker, these figures are not available. I regret that statistics in the form requested by my honourable friend are not available. Comprehensive information is not available. The information is not available. Similar statistics are not available. 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 It would be wrong to suggest that no information filters out of the seat of power. Much does, more than ever. But it is still at the discretion of the powerful. For while other nations have enshrined the right to know in law, Westminster resisted five times. Official information bill. February 1977. Official information bill. July 1977. Official information bill. December 1978. Official information bill. January 1979. Official information bill. February 1981. The basic aim of a Freedom of Information Act is to make state facts readily available by right and force officials to justify themselves if answers are withheld. Ten years ago, there was a Hell for Leather campaign on Canvey Island. People marched against the threat of another petrochemical plant. Ten years ago, the dangers were never admitted. Ten years ago, they were told there was little to worry about and they simply didn't believe it. Children, listen. We're now going to pretend that there's a light gas. So that means we've got to get down on the ground as far as possible. So grab your hands up, get your towels, uh, stretch out, stretch out, make sure you're all lying down and stretched. Have your, get underground and cover your faces. This is an object lesson in changed attitudes. Even the children of Canvey can now be told what the risks are and how to deal with them. Yesterday's grim secrets were opened and Canvey didn't panic. Yet in and around the island, there's one of the biggest concentrations of hazardous processes in the UK. Two oil refineries, two oil depots, a chemical works, a gas bottling plant, and the mighty methane terminal. To the island's MP, Sir Bernard Brain, though, it's much more than an eyesore. There's a very real potential threat, and not only from the installations, which are static, uh, but from uh, mobile risks like the large numbers of uh, tankers that uh, uh, ply up and down the, 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 the Thames. It took time and concerted local pressure to make the authorities break silence. What they now know makes for very grim reading, and even the local paper's resident doom watcher, Del Flatley, admits it is alarming information to pass on. Yes, but at the same time, it's telling people exactly the danger that they live cheek by jowl, daily. They're in that danger. We'd be wrong as a newspaper if we didn't tell them that. And what notice do they take of what you write? Unfortunately, very little. Very little? Very little. You can still buy houses on Canby. The prices are still high. People are still prepared to go and live on Canby, even in the danger zone. However large the dangers loom with the facts exposed, the islanders still cement new routes close to the risks themselves. The more they know, the less they seem to worry. This island to me is one of the best in the world. That's my personal opinion. That's all I can say to you. I'm, I'm honestly, and that terminal out there don't mean a thing to me. Well, I've got no reason why I should be worried about it. I'm quite happy living here. 
don't worry me at all. You don't worry about no, living on canvas? No, not at all. It's, uh, it's something I think personally is blown out of all proportion as to what everybody says about it. It doesn't really worry me in the least. The attitude has become matter of fact to matters of fact. This book, courtesy of the council, shows how to survive an explosion. The fact that they printed it is a bit reassuring that they really think we need protecting and we'll do something about it. And presumably the fact also that you now have the right to be told, whereas before you didn't. Yes, I think that's very important that we should know so those that want to go can go and those that want to stay, stay knowing what they are living with. The council has gone much further than any other authority and also published full evacuation plans, risking the accusation that if you show people how to escape, they'll be alarmed. But there's no sign of alarm on the island, in spite of all the escape signs. For even on threatening Canvey, some people may not bother to read any of it. That is quite possible. And indeed, when implementing any emergency plans, to safeguard our own actions, we have to assume that they haven't read it. Would you know what to do if one of the gas terminals leaked? I wouldn't have idea. If the siren goes, I know where to go for the information and what to do. Obviously, I've read the booklet, so now I have an idea of what I should do. Have you read that booklet? Some of it. What did you think of it? Well, it's information, that's all, isn't it? Information, that's all? That's all. Isn't information important? Yes, but not when you come to explosions. There is a genuine right to know. People here, I think, as a result of the campaign we've waged over a long period, do know a great deal more uh, than most people living uh, near to hazards. But you can't warn people unless you give them the facts, unless you can change the relentless machinery of tradition and risk showing some secrets before the truth is torn to shreds.